Hello, friends, and welcome to the very first breaking news update here at tinyurl.com slash corny YouTube. You know, one of the things we had been talking about doing here on the Arcadian Vanguard channel was having updates when something newsworthy was happening in between episodes of the Jim Cornette experience, and something newsworthy has happened, and of course, it has involved Mr. Jim Cornette. Jim's on the line. This is the first thing you have said publicly, the first recording of you talking about this incident that happened, I guess, 16 hours ago or so. You were served with papers by the local police department. I'll just turn it over to you right now, Jim. Exactly what is going on? Brian, actually, I I just, I don't know what to say because I was just, you know, I was here at home at the castle last night and and I had not had any reason to pull the drawbridge up or, or to let the alligators back in the moat or to close the gates. Uh, it, it wasn't even dark yet. And suddenly right there, I'm, I'm in the kitchen at the kitchen sink, looking right out the front window. And there is these two huge giant. I don't know if they're state troopers or they were, they were very, they were armed and dangerous law enforcement officials. And it looked right at me. I'm like, oh, fuck. Because normally there'd be all kinds of places I could go around here where I wouldn't be obvious. Anyway, I digress. So they not immediately knock right on the front door there, and I open the door, and they said, are you Jim Cornette? I said, yes. And I, I now, it's not that law enforcement coming to my door is unheard of. Doesn't happen often, but it's not unheard of, but it hadn't happened in a while, and I was not immediately flashing on the reason what, like, the jig is up, Right. I really, I really didn't. I'm like, what the fuck? Maybe it's, it's now I'm thinking somebody's dead, right? They're going to give me some kind of fucking news. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Did they say Jim or James? Well, uh, uh, James Cornette. And I said, yes. And they say, your date of birth and blah, blah, blah. They said, well, we have a, we have an EPO here from Posey County, Indiana. And I just looked at him for a second. I said, I don't know what that is. I didn't even know where Posey County, Indiana was, and I don't know what an EPO is. So I'm like, does this environmental protection, if I some hazardous waste, what have I done here? And they and they thought I they, that I was more concerned about where Posey County, Indiana was than I said. No, what is an EPO? Oh, a protective order. And I'm starting to turn again. And just then, as the wheels are turning, the guy said. The officer, I'm sorry, I should give proper respect. Do you know a Vincent Russo? And I popped. And just as he's saying, and statements on a national podcast. And he, you know, you can tell this guy listens to a lot, a lot of podcasts. I pop right in his face and fucking scream, Stace, come here. And she runs down the stairs. And I said, Russo's got a protective order against me. And she starts laughing. And, they, and he tried to continue to in, inform me of everything. You know, I was I was then informed that I was officially served with this thing and everything while we're fucking howling. I said, thank you. That was not the normal response, I guess, that they get when they come to the door with papers such as this. But anyway, I, but then, you know, we so we did the, the laughing and the joking and the, as Dusty Rhodes would say, and then the cooking and the smoking. Uh, we, we, we did all this and, and, and mocked this and, and, and sent this out on Twitter immediately to a cacophony of, uh, responses all day we've had on, on the, on our Twitter machines. Brian, you've seen them. It's exploded. It's gone <laughs> super viral. But, but, but here's the thing. I got to take a different tone here. I got to take a different tone here because I sat down as I was looking at the weight, the gravitas of this nine page legal document because a lot of places they it's a form letter so you check off what applies to you so since we're not in any way related he and i and we haven't had sex with each other you eliminate half the boxes but that still takes up some pages but it's a nine page document so the the, the weight of that sitting here looking at me and it's stamped and it's filed in the posey county indiana superior court which is a, a legal place in indiana where they have a court I said, well, you know, maybe I ought to take this more seriously because I, I'm, I, I guess I'm going to have to modify my behavior, Brian. I, I thought that we were just bros doing podcasts. He always said that it was my, my shtick, I think was a quote, to knock him and that I did it for downloads and attention and everything, you know, to, <clears throat> cause that's what my people expected of me and et cetera. And, and, and you, you wouldn't take out a, a protection order over that. You'd be foolish to do that. I, so I didn't realize he was taking it so seriously. And, 
And obviously, the, the, the last thing that I would ever do is disobey a court order. I would not do that. And I, I certify that here right now in public. So I'm going to do the things that this, this court order says because there's, it's a lot of the boxes are checked off. But <clears throat> I basically have to, Vince Russo says he's been a victim of stalking by me that uh, I threatened to cause physical harm to him, that I placed him in fear of physical harm. And and this would happen not only on national podcasts, but that I've been doing this uh, in his own handwriting here since October of 1999 in five different states. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, 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 and that's, you know, that's the, so I'm re- prohibited from doing these things or from being around him or, or his wife. So the, the last thing that I would ever do is violate a court order. So I'm going to stay away from Vince Russo's house that I've never been to and his place of employment, if we can find it. And I'm going to stay away from his wife, Amy, who I haven't seen since 1997. And I won't call him on his current phone number that I've never called and didn't have before last week. And, and most of all, I promised that I would never commit and <clears throat> excuse me, hold on. I'm going to read. I'm actually quoting here. I would never do any of these things that I'm prohibited from doing. I would never commit acts of domestic or family violence, stalking or sex offenses against Vince Russo or his household members or any other kind of member that he might have hanging around. Never will I do such a thing. I swear to that. And I, I got to be honest. I want to apologize to Vince. If, if, if Vince, if I can be so familiar, Mr. Russo, if I cannot, for, for putting him, it, 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 to quote this document, in fear of physical harm. Because the last thing, Brian, you know me, that I would ever want on my conscience is the thought of Vince Russo laying awake at night being scared of me. Now and and now that something like that is is documented here legally that it is a fact that it happens here I, I I feel terrible I don't I didn't realize what I had done and how he had taken it and but I I just feel horrible think of the poor guy laying there quivering and 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 I thought that we were making progress with each other it, it was right after he made a public apology to me. And it got him a lot of headlines. A lot of people listened to it and heard it, heard what he had to say there and, and heard the flavor of it. And when he made that public apology to me, I responded with the, uh, the broadcast where I admitted defeat and declared him the winner. And I, I assure you that I, I, my sentiments there and my statements were as genuine and truthful and heartfelt as was, was his apology. I think everybody agreed on that. And just the day after that, that program aired, where I admitted the he was the winner and admitted defeat aired, Vince Russo went and and went to court and filed this order. So he must not have accepted, obviously, my concession. And I, you know, it just it's just when it seemed like that we we may get to where we could hang out sometime, and 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 just bat some ideas about the business back and forth that we were coming to some kind of common ground or whatever. And the people wanted it dozens and dozens of people emailed us in that one week with Vince's address, his phone numbers. One guy had all of his, you saw that Brad had all of his addresses and, and that he'd ever lived at every phone number he'd ever had all this other information. It was like an FBI file, like a Rockford files. It was rather weird. How many people had all of his information, including his real estate listing, his house is for sale, and oh several God. people sent that in. I mean, it is weird that so many people yeah. had this information. Well, and that's that's something. It, it, but the people wanted us to get together. They wanted to bring us together. But it, it but it can't be now because I I cannot I cannot be around Vince, and I'm also I'm hoping that his house being on on the market for sale is not a byproduct of him thinking that he's too close to me just because we figured it out that he was like less, a, a little bit over two hour drive. Cause you got that Evansville traffic on the way to Mount anyway. But anyway, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm so confused that all the, the, the times that Vince said face to face, don't talk behind my back. And, and, but now I hope he doesn't think I'm talking behind his back now because I'm on tape and being, recorded and on worldwide internet, just like all those other times. But he thought I was talking behind his back because now I can't, I can't talk to his face. Cause that's, that would be illegal for me to do that. 
So I'm not going to try to contact him in any way. So I don't want him to think I'm talking behind his back. I'm getting mixed signals from this relationship. I'm guessing the offer for you to appear on his podcast has been rescinded. I don't think it would be legal now. <laughs> what, what do you think? What do you think Swifty Flanagan would say? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of things here. I am curious, too, about the idea of using the court system in a manner that isn't legitimate. I wonder what the repercussions of that are. Well, I mean, what's the, but here's why I'm apologizing as so profusely like I am now, because you can see that I'm being profuse about this, that, that, that he feels it was legitimate, that, that he got that scared and, and, and intimidated. And I hate that because I want to apologize. I mean, especially for him to have to take time off of, it, it will not work, but time out of his busy life. To go down to court and tell this humiliating story of how that I have been stalking him for 18 years in five different states, only two of which I've ever actually been in at the same time as him. And it's at, it, during that period of time, worked for the same company for three years and actually sat in those meetings, which he must have been filled with terror. Um, and, 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 and having to go and get this order and have it filed and everything. And I hope that while he was down there that nobody thought that he was the victim of some kind of domestic abuse, because that would just be demeaning. And I feel bad about putting him through that. All of this is happening pretty quickly. I mean, we're again on the air 16 hours after you were served with these papers. I think it's important to kind of look at this time frame right here, not the entire 18 years you were allegedly stalking this man, but let's specifically look at this short period of time, really since WrestleMania, since table for three aired table for three airs, you and Eric Bischoff bond over a mutual distaste for Vince Russo. It appears after that that he takes great offense to that, calls you guys a bunch of names. I think he says things along the lines of you guys have no balls. You won't say anything to his face. The well, next, now, I, I wasn't going to bring all this up, but go ahead. The next thing, you know, and again, my timeline may be slightly off. You go on the Jim Cornette Experience, your podcast, and you say, I will gladly meet you face to face, but it won't be on camera. It won't be something for podcast ratings or for profit. No weapons, no guns, no knives. Let's meet face to face. Give me a time and a day. I didn't say no weapons. I did say no guns, no knives. Okay. Okay. A minor correction there. Yeah. That was followed up by Vince Russo releasing a video, which was shtick for, for the lack of a better term. It was a comedy skit. Where in the midst of his no shit. no now don't just don't just demean it like that it was Jackie Mason level stuff I mean come on well in the midst of this again he calls you a bunch of names and he really just laughs off any threat of violence from you he laughs off any threat of you coming after him he he acts like he doesn't have a care in the world you follow that with a very lighthearted segment on the Jim Cornette experience uh, admitting defeat admitting declaring defeat. him the winner. You say that at some point you hope he gets what he has coming to him? Uh, um, no, I said I had a gift. You had a gift? I had a gift for him, and, and I thought he deserved it, and I wanted to see him get what he deserved. And, since and a that, lot of people, other people did too. But eh, eh. Since that period of time, he has not really said much about you. He has obviously had a little bit of a Twitter war with Bruce Pritchard out of nowhere. And then you get served with these papers. You know, I, I have to say, it does remind me of something we talked about not too long ago on the show. Remember, there was a story where all of a sudden he started declaring that professional wrestling fans were gay. And it, it came out of an instance where he critiqued, I, I guess, the physique of Finn Balor and a wrestling fan sent a picture of him and said, look, he's actually in great shape. And the response was, you know, you're gay. And it's kind of the same thing here where it's. Everyone's a wimp. No one will say it to my face. No, 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 now, now, Brian, we don't want to take that tone with poor little Vince because it's obvious that he's upset and we've caused him hurt and, and, and emotional pain. And we, we should be in the middle of trying to, as, as I'm saying, I'm not going to be doing any of these things anymore. We're trying to make up for this and apologize. We shouldn't attempt to dog pile on a guy when he's down in the middle of dog shit. You know, that's, that's an old saying we have down sad. Do they have that up North? Not exactly. But, but let me ask you this, Jim, because I've heard this said by several people tweeted by several people. And in fact, Dave Meltzer said it this morning on his radio show. Do you think there's any chance that this could be happening for publicity purposes for Vince Russo? I've, 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 maybe he's got Kelly Ann Conway um, doing his publicity because I don't see how it could be very uh, much worse for. Uh, but, uh, 
And you know, but I'm I'm going to take it at its at its face value, and I'm just going to say once again, I'm I feel bad, and and that I've I've caused him such pain, and so I guess. I guess we should quit talking about each other so much because, I mean, I'm sure things will occasionally come up. But after after this, well, it, it would look a little silly for him to keep on cutting promos on me on his show, uh, you know, after he did something like this. So that's going to take away the only thing that ever got him any attention. So I feel bad about that. But I will I'll do the same and I'll lay off of him a little bit, too, because, you know, ever since me and. And and Bischoff and Bruce Pritchard and 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 actually and and Vince Russo's own words in his book from like ten years ago, um, it, over the past several weeks have pretty much confirmed everything that everybody's had to say about Vince. There's not much new to debate over, and and I can't debate him now anyway, face to face, or even, you know, if I would contact him on Skype, that'd be illegal because he it would frighten him. So. Like I said, the last thing on my on my conscience that I want is the thought of poor Vince sitting in his house and shivering, being afraid of me. I cannot have that. So I'm going to lighten up a little bit on the little fella. The principal's been called in, folks. This is not going to look good in the comments section on either of our report cards. And we we found out that one batter was major league and the other batter was little league. So from now on, Brian, I, I think we should make it here on the show. We shouldn't ignore him because that's the worst thing we can do to poor Vince is ignore him since he's always wanting people to talk about him. But we should only bring it up and talk about him, about the factual stupid things that he says and does in public. And and and, and we should try not to say, I think, any more mean things that scare him. And I, I just think that's the absolute least that I can do to, to make it up to Vince. Well, you know, how many hookers do you throw in a dumpster fire before it's too many? Uh, maybe that's an expression we have in the North and not the South. I've never heard that expression, but good, but good God. Well, let me ask you this before we wrap He's things up, Jim. Oh, say it, it's, it's burning like a dry barn in fucking hot weather or something like that. Not goddamn hookers in a dumpster. What the fuck? Well, Jim, let me ask you this before we wrap things up. A couple questions. You said this is nine pages. I would certainly like to... Give her, give a read to this. It sounds like a lot of people would probably like to get their hands on this. Well, actually, if you if you do listen to next week's Jim Cornette experience, which would be what debuting and dropping, as the kids say, on uh, what what would that be? Thursday the 29th? Is Thursday that? the 29th. Uh, we, we're probably going to have a pretty good idea of how to tell you exactly how to go to jimcornette.com and get your own personally autographed copy of this bad boy that I'm holding in front of my face right now. Oh, okay. I, I think because... <laughs> I, well, I want to make sure that everybody uh, around the country knows that I am suitably chastened by the the fine legal judicial system of the United States of America that that there was things I was saying that was making Vince Russo so scared and and feeling bad. And I'm I'm going to keep this in front of me as a daily reminder of what I've done here. And, and and not to do it again, of course, obviously. In terms of the actual legalities here, I know according to the court website for the state of Indiana, it says that a protective order has been filed against you. It does it does not show yet that you've actually been served, but of course you had. But what is the next step? Is there anything you have to do? Is there anyone you have to consult with? Or now that you have this, is that it? You don't have to do anything? Uh, according to everything that I can read here, unless I've committed sodomy with him or something like that, unless I've done some things that uh, that even he is not alleging I've done, I just pretty much have to stay away from the little fella and and not and not harass him and bother him too much. So and obviously, you know, I guess I guess he's selling his house and moving farther away, so that'll be even easier to do. But I just I just wish we could have got together and it hadn't come to this. But I just, you know, just thought we were just bros doing podcasts, man. Just bros doing podcasts. Well, there it is, the very first breaking news update here at tinyurl.com slash corny YouTube, the Arcadian Vanguard video channel. Of course, if there's anything else really big that happens, if Jim gets served the second or third time before next week's experience. Hey, now what what are you trying to bring ill on me or something? We will bring it to you right here, but if not, I'll I'll be be in the Anne Frank room at the castle. (laughs) We will give you any other updates to this story next week on the Jim Cornette Experience, which again comes out on Thursday, June 29th. Jim, any final words for the listeners? 
Well, once again, I think everybody sees that that what I've done here is is laid bare my soul today, and and just admitted that I've just I've just gone too far and and hurt the little fella's feelings, and that's the last thing I would ever ever want to do. And 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 like I said, I'm going to keep this document right here as a daily reminder of what I've done. I would say that I'll think about this incident and what I've done to Vince Russo probably every day for the rest of my life. I will carry that with me, and. I don't know what else to say.